Hi, I'm Dr. Sara Nasserzadeh. And I'm Dr. Alan Altman, and we're here today on Love Bites. We are here on Love Bites, and we're with Dr. Jane Greer today. Dr. Greer, who are you and what do you do? Well, thank you for asking and thank you for having me here. I'm a marriage and family therapist and psychotherapist. I'm also an author and a radio host. And my books, a couple of them, one is What About Me? Stop Selfishness from Ruining Your Relationship, which we all can relate to. And another one which many people can relate to is How Could You Do This to Me? Learning to Trust After Betrayal. My radio show is The Doctor on Call Show. And I also do a show within that. It's on every week on HealthyLife.net. And I do Let's Talk Sex on the Dr. On Call Show at HealthyLife.net. And the show is really an opportunity for, I have many authors who've written on many different relationship topics, anything that has to do with sexual activity, anything that's going to enhance the audience's understanding of themselves, their relationships, come on on board. Oh, that's brilliant. Fascinating. What about betrayal? Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, that's uh, one of my favorite topics. Thank you for asking. You know, the book topic, the title actually came about because I was a media consultant on many shows coming out of my previous book, which was on adult sibling rivalry. And no matter what show I was doing, sisters, parents, couples, ultimately the crux at the end of the show was one person turned to the other and said, how could you do this to me? And I said, you know, that is the knee-jerk reaction when we're betrayed. Mm -hmm. And betrayal, particularly sexual betrayal, infidelity, is bar none the most devastating, horrific experience to happen to anybody. It's right up there with the death or the loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get into that. I think, I think we ought to spend some time in a different segment looking at what's the potential benefit of that? But before you yell at me, let's talk about this damage. Let's talk about the loss of trust. As a gynecologist, I'm starting to see in my office, probably over the last two decades, women doing the cheating. Oh, yes. And the women saying to me, uh, you know, I've, I have an outside relationship. Uh, next segment, we'll get into the fact that she says, and it's the best thing that's ever happened in my relationship. Let's talk about the damaging stuff. So it's coming from both sides now. Yes. We're living longer. So if we're in a committed or marital relationship, by living longer, that relationship is lasting longer, and there are more reasons for them to fall apart over time. Let's look at that. Okay, so absolutely. You know, it, first of all, the betrayal, when it happens, when trust is broken, that is the ultimate destruction. Because trust is so sacred, and your sense of safety, your sense of protection with your partner, that you can be real, you can be yourself, mm -hmm. and open up and let go. When that gets compromised and sacrificed, it is an arduous and a very long process to rebuilding it. Now, to go to the positive, recently I did a segment on the CBS News on, a, on something called Alibi.com. It's a um, website that is actually designed towards facilitating infidelity and helping people create the reasons why and the lies, if you will, to cover their tracks. And as you can imagine, many people had outrageous responses and reactions. In, in addition to my own response, which was, it serves a purpose, suspending judgment. And the truth of the matter is you're absolutely right because working with so many couples as I have, the fact is is that there are those affairs which if they were not happening, the marriage would not survive. Mm -hmm. That it really becomes the support which keeps a marriage in place. And also, those affairs that get discovered mm -hmm. when somebody finds out that a partner has been cheating, they suddenly, it's their wake-up call, and they really now start to pay attention and hear what they have not heard five years, ten years, that their partner's been complaining, their partner's unhappy. They take it seriously enough, and they're finally willing to do the work to revitalize and rebuild the marriage. So in fact, the aftermath can really enhance and not just save a marriage, but make the marriage 
Yeah. You know, it's interesting because we're not just talking, as, as I see in my practice, about marriages of longer term. You tend to see in your office situations uh, where you have young people who come in who are coupled for a much shorter period of time and are dealing with this kind of affair infidelity issue. Yeah, well, uh, one thing I have to say is um, the infidelity, the terminology is, uh, I think you agree, that it's changing over time, yes. especially for the new generation. Absolutely. Because infidelity for our generation, or you know, the generation before, it has a negative, it had a, a negative connotation to it. But now more and more people with the increasing number of the, uh, actually statistically is not significantly more, but more and more people are looking into open relationships. So they call it, it's just how you define your expectations and boundaries. So for example, when you're talking about how you could do this to me, the, the, I absolutely agree with you because I see your couples in front of me that they are devastated. That's mm -hmm. the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. They either come to realization as what they were not doing, just to do it and save the marriage, or that was just the last straw to show them that this marriage is not working anyway. Right. Exactly so just right. go your separate way, just in, but in a civilized way. It doesn't matter what caused it. But, but you know, I want to, first of all, I want to go back to your initial question, which was, what about the women? The women are indeed cheating as much as the men. When I look over my practice and I keep notes and, and stats on the couples, it's 50-50. The women are cheating just as much as, as the men are and have been. And, you know, part of what happens is that somebody's talking to their partner and complaining and complaining, they're unhappy, and they don't get through to the partner, and then they just stop. So the other person thinks, they understand me, they accept me now, it's no longer an issue, mm -hmm. and they're happy and they're content, but their partner has reached the point of frustration and what's the point, I'm not getting through. And that's when they become vulnerable and susceptible to somebody else coming onto them, connecting with them, and that's what generates the, you know, it's, uh, because a lot of people do not go out looking to betray. Correct. Mm -hmm. But, and everybody who's been in my office, it's almost the universal response will be, you know, I'm a good person. Because everybody wrestles with and grapples with compromising their values yeah. and, their, and their morality to be involved in another relationship. But for example, one of the men that I work with, the, the wife is absolutely adamant against oral sex. And he's been dealing with this and dealing with this and finally saying, what am I supposed to do? Am I never? supposed to have oral sex. Well, that's not my decision to make, but these are the kinds of decisions that people challenge themselves and question on a daily basis, or they're missing the emotional intimacy in well, their partner. let's take a look at how the culture works on this and how the culture uh, allows or promotes this happening uh, when we take a look again with Dr. Jane Greer. Terrific. 